Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to January 1930 here in New York City with our little newspaper, The Lantern Ledger. That's right, we're here. We got a couple things we're supposed to do. Uh, we got to build a newspaper and have it ready for printing next Sunday. Now, I'm going to try and, and do these as a little shorter episodes, and I might do some history at the end, uh, or maybe in the middle. We'll kind of figure it out. I might cut it in wherever I feel fit. So let's go ahead and hop in, get this game going. Um, we got to make sure we get some of our reporters out to, to investigate what they need to investigate. So it looks like Dennis Brown is out there doing his investigation of the recession on the loose. Organized crimes offers hard to pass for many. Uh, and then let's see what we got here out in San Francisco. Uh, we can't quite do that yet. So it might be time we hire ourselves. Um, do we want to hire another reporter? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and hire ourselves another reporter. We'll go and build ourselves a reporting desk here. We'll get that plop down right there for a hundred bucks. We still got two and a half thousand dollars. Um, so let's look and see what we have now. Um, we got crime. We've got economy and we got society. We also have politics, entertainment, and sports. So let's see if we can find um, something maybe a little different. Um, crime, entertainment, 70, 50, 50, or 70, 70. Maybe Charles Young. Yeah, let's grab uh, let's grab old Charles Young here. He'll be our new reporter. And let's pop back out here. I don't think we can quite send... Oh, yeah, we can send Charles here to the serial burglar strikes again. Uh, residents on edge. When will it stop? All right, Charles is going to start to take care of that for us. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Charles. Um, while Charles does that, we can start to plan our newspaper because we already got three articles. Uh, yes, when we haven't printed an article as quickly as we could have or should have, uh, it becomes old. Um, and we do lose 500 newspapers when we do that. Um, but it could be worth it. Yeah, thank you. Um, it'll be removed after one week. So let's go ahead and do Turkey Growers Unite. Um, and then we'll also grab, I want to make these a little bit bigger. Uh, Real Girls from Helen Ferry, Lady Smoke. We can drop this here as well. And then maybe we can toss this just for now. Uh, God, we got these three. We need to get a second page. Uh, I think we can build a second page. Let's pause for a second here as we hit Wednesday. Uh, and we're going to flip over to our production or maybe it's under printing. Okay. It's under printing here. Um, printer page module, $1,000. So I don't think we've quite unlocked it yet. Let's pop out to the map here. Um, cause there is a way to get it and I, I forget how, um, let's see. Cause the mafia wants us to print no politics. So we got to make sure we do that. Uh, let's pop back to the map. Is it it's somewhere? Empire State? Nope, that's the mayor. We'll eventually get to him. No, it's not there. Well, let's keep pressing forward here in January of 1930 with our, our newspaper here. Um, maybe we move this off? What do we got? We could do the sports. Vara, Vara Papa takes lead in bowling tournament. Yeah, we can drop that there. Um, I know we don't need that. Basically no politics. That was, that was the main thing, right? Um, burglar, burglar. Okay. So maybe we do this one, uh, outstrikes Ada Harris in two day individual title match. Uh, yeah, I think we, we leave that like that. Let's go ahead and speed this along here. Um, we can pick up another sports story. Boxing icon stops Ronald power or Porter. You can pop out there because bare knuckle jones retires at 38 uh, apparently he wants his glove so ron is that his name ron yeah ronald porter can start that um san francisco we got the the burglar thing done let's get dennis brown up here at the police station uh apparently the police are increasing patrols we can't do this one because we don't have anyone to do either the politics or the well the unrest i i guess um, we probably should have Dennis Brown do that down there first, but that's fine. We'll get him researching that story. It's also adventurous, so that's nice. Let's see, what do they want? Um, they do want that adventurous story. So let's get this moving along here. Um, that newspaper is finishing. All right. Um, okay, so they want us to build something f for food, which means we need to order some food. Okay, we'll order that. $900 worth of food. 
uh, to make sure we're keeping our little water cooler down here stocked. That seems pretty expensive, even by today's standards. I think I can help out and just drag that right there. There we go. Let's see if we can pop one more in there. There, 103 things of water, 103 cups of water. That should keep them pretty happy as we round here into Saturday uh, in News Tower in January 1930. Okay, it is Sunday morning. It's time to print our paper. Let's take a peek at it. Um, see if we want to change anything up. Um, but I don't think I have, oh, I do have a second page. Oh, okay. So let's, um, let's do some, um, let's do a sports page, shall we? We'll get, uh, the Vara Papa takes lead in bowling tournament. We'll get the boxing icon stops. So that's going to give us a nice little bonus since we have two, two articles there. All right, guys, I'm going to jump into the middle of the video here. So it turns out that that bare knuckle Jones article that I originally wanted to do some research on was actually fake. I couldn't find anything on the, any person named bare knuckle Jones and boxing or anything like that. But Vera Papa is actually a real life bowler. The, the game it mentioned didn't exist, um, especially in the 1930, uh, January of 1930. But uh, I'll just give you a little bit of history on him and uh, kind of who he is. And you can see him standing there with that bowling ball next to all these nice ladies. Um, so he is a trick shot extraordinaire. Originally born March 31st, 1891 in Italy. Eventually migrated to Brooklyn in 1903 with his parents where he worked a bunch of odd jobs. He was a pin setter, so this is kind of where he got it started, started to be exposed to bowling. Delivery boy, soap maker. He worked as a switchman, so he would like switch the switches for trains and things like that. Um, according to his Wikipedia page, he bowled his first game in 1904 at Fraternity Hall in Williamsburg, which is a, a, a subdivision inside of Brooklyn, um, where he copied the style of local uh, legend Jimmy Smith, who ended up being the 1906 world champion. He was injured by a truck in 1919 and spent World War I uh, actually working in the Brooklyn Naval Yard. Eventually, after World War I, quite a bit after World War I, in 1926, he was hired by the Lawler brothers to manage their, their bowling business, their bowling alley, where he kind of really started to focus on his game. Before that, it was just a fun pastime, but here in 1926, we really start to see Andy Varapapa really take a hold of bowling. Um, so again, he starts to expand that in 1926. Uh, 1927 and 1928, he collects some local titles, the Brooklyn Alley owner's individual title uh, and then the doubles, as long as the Long Island individual title. In 1930, uh, Varapapa and Joe Falcaro dominate Jim McGurr, McGarry, uh, and Charlie Riley, winning a 42-game match by 1,626 pins. And according to, to Varapapa, this is, again, kind of where he's like, oh, I actually have a potential future in this and, and decides he wants to, to look at being a professional bowler. Really, he finds trick shots to be his solid area of bowling. He didn't really care much for the professional bowling. There wasn't a way to make a lot of money that just really didn't involve gambling. Everything I've gathered about him, he's a pretty stand-up guy um, and wanted to do this the right way. So as he focuses on trick shots, he lands some uh, pretty cool film roles, strikes and spares in 1934, set him up in 1939, and then bowling tricks in 1948. He really became famous uh, in a household name uh, by tackling 7-10 splits uh, by rolling two balls down the, the, the alleyway. And you can see that photo there where he's doing that. Um, and then in 1946 and 47, he actually won the BPAA All-Star uh, and then finished second in 1948. So this is kind of like their championship game, the world champions. So not, a, not only was he a good trick shotter, but he did pretty well with uh, actual bowling. Uh, and continued to perform into the 1980s, was in several TV shows. Um, he won an $8,000 jackpot doing a, a bowling thing uh, on one of the TV shows whose names I'm blanking on. And then also ended up in 1970, uh, Richard Nixon appointed him to the Presidential Council for Exercise. Uh, so he, he did a lot with uh, that and was one of the only bowlers, or is the only bowler to ever be appointed to that council. So he, he did some pretty cool things there. Uh, and then sadly passed on August 25th, 1948. So yeah, there's a little history on Varapapa, uh, our article of the day. 
Uh, I am kind of disappointed we couldn't do uh, Bare Knuckle Jones, uh, the boxer. So I'll, I'll try and do this for some other articles throughout the gameplay. Let me know if you guys like this. Again, this is something brand new. I'm trying something a little different. So any and all feedback would be appreciated. Leave me that comment on down below on how this went. And I'll see you back in the video. Really, we just want no political. That's our, that's our big thing. Nothing political here. Um, yeah, no political. So no, no state house photos. Um, let's move turkey growers down here. It's an older one. Second page, not as important. We'll keep that there. We'll swing over the Serial Burglar, because that gets that as Adventurous tag there, so that should finish up Ma Masspeth. Uh, that'll be nice. And then do we want Recession on the Loose, or do we want uh, Marooned on Small Rocks? Let's let's take Marooned on Small Rocks, and we'll... Uh, oh, we got to buy some paper. Okay, well, it'll buy paper for us. Let's print ourselves some nice additions there. We got one crime article for next time. And then I think we'll do uh, that... Bare Knuckle Jones as our little history piece here. We sold 12,700 newspapers. Nice sales record. Um, I wish my husband was adventurous. Yeah, so do I. Well. <laughs> uh, okay, that was a weird comment. You can just ignore that. Let's move on. I've never lost a game. I just ran out of time. Okay, record sales, two districts, four hidden agendas. We helped the mafia out by not printing. Get $3,948. Uh, get both those check marks. This should also complete the Mafia. We want nothing but success for you and your paper. This way, your debt will be cleared in no time. I'm just a man of business, as your uncle knows. Um, okay, nice. Made quite a pretty penny, I think. Uh, we probably should reduce our loans a little bit if we can. Yeah, maybe we'll do that by a $1,000 or so. Um, so before we jump out of the recap, Thank you so much for coming out and watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, let me know. It is a little bit different type of a video, uh, so I'd love to hear some feedback on that. It's a little shorter uh, than what I normally do. So again, any and all feedback on this or any of my other videos is always appreciated. So if you wanna make sure you see the next one for February of 1930, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming so you get all this great content on time and in orderly fashion. And we'll see you in the next one.